All right, the squad cast has made an acquisition. Uh, we have a new guest here on the set who has been here before, of course, but uh, you'll recognize him from RBI Baseball here in Regina. It's Chris Untreiner. Chris, RBI welcome to Baseball the and Softball. Thank you. Yes, it's RBI Baseball <laughs> and Sorry, Softball. Sorry, Chris, we, we don't have the $50 million that the cards got with Aaron Auto for you. We apologize. Yeah. We're working on it. Appreciate that. Uh, I was going to say it's your premier baseball and softball training facility in southern Saskatchewan. Actually, let's just say in Saskatchewan. Why not? At RBI, they rise above the rest. Uh, Chris, um, there's been a ton of big news, and we've been talking a little bit about it. Uh, you're a big Jays fan. Yeah. Uh, now, am I correct in saying that you were a Twins fan growing up? Uh, Joe Mauer. Yeah. I you were think a big we're going to talk Maurer catching, guy. too, so yeah. that's kind of relevant. Yeah. We'll get into that in yeah. about uh, three and a half minutes. But so that the, means seven. The, yeah. The Blue, Jays, <laughs> uh, the Blue Jays made a big addition, two big additions. Yes. Uh, and we were talking about how it affected their lineup. Yeah. Um, Alan, if you have it, we have the projected lineup that I put together uh, still in the system somewhere. You, between you and Jordan, can you get you didn't that up? Get fired as manager since last week. Uh, no, they they've kept you. me on board. They nice. liked my lineup, so they left good. me. They yeah. left me be. It um, did look good. But George Springer, uh, Chris, and Marcus Semyon, yes. what do those types of guys bring to this lineup of young players uh, that is ready to kind of break over the edge? Um, leadership. I mean, we are talking. I was even texting you guys as soon as Springer that signature they're signing, and uh, yeah, you know what? He he knows how to win. He's with the Astros, won a championship or two, or was in the playoffs for years and yeah. years and years. Um, he won the he uh, got, World Series MVP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, funny story. So, my dog is a Springer. Yeah. Um, so we said when we were watching the World Series with Springer that if he ended up a J, we'll probably have to get matching jerseys. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I so like it. dog nice. lovers out there, you guys will like that one. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I thought you were going to change your dog's name to George. Yeah. Uh, that would be good too. <laughs> George No, no. You can't Winnie, do that. Winnie will stay. You can't Winnie do that. Stay. Nice. Um, but yeah, leadership. Um, they know how to lead a team. They know how to be successful uh, when it matters. Yeah. Obviously, the Jays saw a little bit of success last year in that shortened season. We talked about that last time I was here. Mm, yeah. But, um, you know, if they get 162 games or whatever they end up getting this year, to be able to ride that out. And then with Semyon, of course, um, I saw an article that a bunch of the players from the athletics are just heartbroken. The fact that he's gone, not because of his bat or the fact that he was a runner up for MVP, MVP yeah. two years ago, mm -hmm. but his leadership. Yeah. Um, wherever he ends up in the Jays lineup, wherever he plays, it goes beyond his bat for sure. I heard he was a, almost a little disappointed that the athletics didn't make a bigger push to keep him too. Yeah. I, I saw a quote today from him that was something along the lines of, uh, we called them, I'll just leave it at that, or something like that. Which is so, an odd narrative when uh, you consider the, the cinematic spectacle that was Moneyball, and they're not yeah. exactly shelling out a lot of money for it, guys. It's on so brand. It's, it's on, on brand, brand for the Oakland days, yeah. Um, Chris, you've coached, you've put together lineups, you've done all that kind of stuff. What does it mean when you have position flexibility in baseball, especially at this level? Uh, it's huge. Uh, I mean, you can almost roll out any lineup that you want, and it doesn't matter one through nine or wherever they're playing. It's you can put them anywhere. Um, you know, if you need a guy that needs an off day with a long season, yeah. or even he's slumping, it's so tough to hit your way out of a slump. So even if it means that you get one or two extra days off, um, or even with the DH, just throw somebody a DH, get them out of the field for a little while, just focus yeah. on you know swinging it or whatever. Yeah, it's huge. Um, yeah, I mean, you said it. I've wrote up lineups before, and it's nice when you can plug one into nine and nine into one and everywhere in between. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, Max, we've been talking a lot about the pitching staff. Do you want to get into that with Chris? Yeah, here? absolutely. And, I mean, I guess my biggest question is when you kind of go out and, and you're filling out your rotation, what does it mean when you've got three out of five of your guys, potentially four even, being lefties? What does that do for, I guess, overall strength of a position staff? Um, if anything at all. Yeah, it's huge. Um, I mean, I don't know what it is, we had that lefty-lefty matchup or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but growing up, until you kind of get to the highest level, which I never made it to, but even beyond. You got pretty close. Yeah, yeah. You did well. You did um, pretty good for yourself. You just don't see solid lefties, mm -hmm. like really, really solid lefties. And to have an entire staff or a, you know, over half of a staff mm -hmm. left-handed, um, or even just having the options if they go with the, the short start and the long relief, mm -hmm. which I've kind of heard rumblings about there too. Mm -hmm. um, they're, even the righties, they don't, they don't see as many good solid lefties. And then sure. it, it forces the other team to you know, have to try to balance out a, a lineup and they might go righty dominant 
and then you got some power arms out of the pen to close out mm -hmm. the back end of a game and you got righties well then they're forcing them to make all those changes too so yeah lots of cards you can throw out there yeah. um i was talking to some guy on facebook that's literally his name uh i'll just <laughs> leave it at that but uh you know who I'm talking about, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, he was talking about how uh, when you have a right-handed batter dominant lineup, that it almost doesn't matter because righties have seen righties their whole life. So there's yep. more of an advantage there compared to if you had an all left-handed lineup yeah. uh, and they faced a lefty and you're almost screwed to an extent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason why lefty bats are so big. You're always looking for a good, solid left-handed yeah. bat because you get on the other side of the plate and they've seen so many righties and you know we we see kids that want to be a switch hitter um and i'm like let's do it because yeah. it at least opens up the opportunity even mm -hmm. if you're 13 and you're working on it we've got a couple kids that are playing around with switch hitting and i'm not going to tell them no because yeah. we want to make sure that if they get up to that next level they get a chance to be successful against the righties and the lefties yeah Absolutely. and i remember max you're a baseball player too you've been in this in this business uh but Growing up, like when our generation, I remember like not me personally, but I, other guys like actively discouraged from being switch hitters. Oh yeah, yeah. They wanted to focus on you know doing Develop the right your thing. One side of the plate. Yep. Yeah, I now, guess you can kind of. I was gonna say just in this generation coming up that you're now molding the minds yeah. of the young players. Uh, is it more of a generally accepted thing to kind of push for it? Um, I still hear it. I still hear a lot of coaches say, "Well, no, you're righty dominant or you're lefty dominant. Stick with that." And I understand to a point that. You don't want to be just good at two things. You want to be great right. at one. But I mean, if these kids are like 11 or 12 years old, like yeah, that's yeah, kind I, of. The I age understand to start. if like a kid's like 17 and is like, hey, I want to try <laughs> switch hitting. It's like, well, we might be a little bit too far gone. But you, know, it goes back to the multi position ability with players. Right. Um, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Like the kids are too young here, especially to specialize. So we talked to Barry Davis last week, uh, you know, yeah. Barry. Um, and one of the things we talked about was, well, JT Real Muto, uh, going back to the Phillies, mm -hmm. the Jays, maybe we're going after him, maybe. Uh, and his offensive ability as a catcher. Um, you're a catcher, Chris. So this is why I want to talk to you about this. You've been third baseman now. Well, ah. now, okay. Transitioning. Yeah, right? you gave it up. Bonus yeah, at third base. Exactly. Right? As soon as right. as soon as you're done your competitive days, your knees are like, yeah, I'm not playing catcher anymore. <laughs> yep. I get that. Um, but so you've played at some pretty solid levels sure. as a catcher, uh, and I would say you were more of an offensive catcher. I could hit a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from my experience, you were a pretty good hitter. Uh, and you continue that, by the way. I'm just pumping your tires a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, so thank you. We Clark talked about the spot next year on the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got it. Hey, yeah. oh, no, we've already talked about it. He's got it. Nolan Bracken was bugging me earlier about <laughs> yeah. my, my oh, pitch yeah. counts and my couple appearances last year. Thanks a lot, Nolan. Uh, however, um, we were talking to Barry Davis, and we were talking about Danny Jansen and the Jays' catcher situation. And he basically said, like, with the lineup the way it is now, with adding Springer and Semyon, any offense you get from your catcher is yeah. gravy. Yeah, that's fair. Now, why is that the case? And uh, me and Max were talking about it a little bit before the show. I have a feeling I know why. But in your experience, why is it the case that catchers tend to be on the lower end of offensive skills? Uh, it's, I mean, baseball being able to be successful on both ends of the field is is damn near impossible as it is mm -hmm. that's why you don't see many pitchers that are great hitters right um i mean defense is just put ahead of it all mm -hmm. absolutely and um if they're a good bat and if they're a really successful bat you want to keep them healthy as long as you can and typically that means early in their career when you can start kind of projecting what kind of player they're going to be you're going to start shifting them elsewhere to make sure that their career isn't the you know isn't going to be one that is short yeah and, and painful there's not many guys like a yadi or molina that can last 20 years and still be successful i mean the guy still hits high 200 yeah decently yeah, yeah. he's not going to hit 350 and mm -hmm. hit 40 bombs but he's gonna he's gonna be able to anchor a position anchor yeah. the, the the pitching staff and and yeah. it's why you see jt real muto yep. getting 24 million dollars a year 
So an example too is he's a white, he's a unicorn, right? Like he yeah. doesn't come along very often. Exactly, so when you yeah. can get him, you keep him. <laughs> yeah. If you know that uh, Josh Donaldson, well-known Toronto right. Blue Jays, started his career yep. as a catcher too and shifted yep. over to third base, where yeah. he's obviously had a lot of success. So exactly. and it's amazing. How Buster Posey, yeah. Joe Mauer, we talked about earlier. Yeah. As they get older, they start to shift. If especially if they're going to be a valuable bat, they're going to be Kyle more. Schwarber is another one. There you right. go. He was a catcher. He's in the outfield. Carlos now. Santana as well. Yes. He had a lot Bryce of Bryce Harper when he was coming up. Bryce Harper. All the hype was when he was a catcher. Yeah. When he was an outfielder. Chris, do you remember? Uh, I don't know if you were in the van with me when we were at Team Sask down in Arizona, and uh, you might have been in a different group than I was. But um, he was in the good group. You yeah, were in the, that's yeah, what I was getting mediocre. at. Yeah, uh, he was in van too. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for pointing that out. Well, hey, just got to be honest but with our audience. It was here. I don't know what year it was, 2007 or eight, I guess. And uh, we had the magazine in hand, the Sports Illustrated, I yep. believe, where Bryce Harper was, was like on the cover. Year old kid, yeah. And he was. Wow. They were talking about how he could throw like. 92 from his knees as a catcher to second base yeah. and we were just all like screw you yeah. <laughs> we're all the same we're looking around the locker yeah. room like can yeah. anybody else do that anybody yeah else got that like, and he can throw like a 96 <laughs> mile an hour fastball but he's an outfielder and all this yeah. stuff and you're like screw you we're we're all out here like working our butts off and <laughs> i just remember him hitting 500 foot bombs in tropicana yeah. with the aluminum bag yeah, yeah. hit the yeah, roof fine, or whatever that video yeah. uh that greg that, clevgard yeah. i'm curious greg he uh, says in huh? canada don't they say back catcher eh eh uh <laughs> We've said back catcher. I, I've always said catcher. Uh, yeah, trying to avoid my, the stereotypes, Greg. That's the that's definitely the correct way is catcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back catcher, Greg. Are you where are you from, Greg? I know you watched the Rob Peterson show, so I'm actually very curious. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd Pinkney, who's a Philadelphia, so I'll just say a sports fan. He's a Phillies fan, though. Uh, he says he's lucky to have JT back. Yes, you are, Todd. Yes, very you are. Lucky. Uh, Mike Ramage tuning in from out at RBI. He says uh, thanks for the <laughs> VIP parking spot tonight at RBI. Uh, Mike Ramage was our contest winner. Mike, I think we're gonna to talk to Chris. He's going to take your contest winnings out to RBI and you can pick it up there. How does that sound? We'll work on that after the show. Uh, and Robin Wildey says, love the fact you guys have nice comfy chairs and JT has the barber chair. You mean Chris? He's not JT Real Muto. Chris, I, I wish I wish you were JT there's, Real there's Muto. There's a passing resemblance. Yeah. Though, <laughs> Quick little 125 um, mil in the yeah. bank. That's, oh, a, that's, good. that's a surprisingly comfortable chair. I will it say is. that. It's nice. um, it doesn't look it necessarily, but it is. I've sat in it before. Yeah. Good um, posture. Oh, Greg's from Swift Current. So what do you mean in Canada? You're, t you're, you're in Canada, I've Greg. I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard it. Too many young coaches. Yeah. Actually, old coaches right. with young teams. They're back saying catcher. Back catcher. Yeah. We'll come up with a t-shirt. We'll just catcher. eliminate back it. We'll catcher. put back and then cross it out. Uh, yes. Catcher. We'll eliminate there the would be. Do you hope that as a catcher, you're not a bat catcher too, yeah. too many times? <laughs> Unless you're a bat flipper. Yeah. That'll work. No kidding. Um, we've talked about it a little bit, Chris, with RBI um, gearing up for the safety. And actually, I was just there with my nephew the other day. And uh, it's teed up to the nines with safety regulations and you guys are are locking everything down and keeping it safe but it sounds like you guys are still pretty full in classes and you're and you're rocking out there uh can you tell us a little bit about where you guys are at in your training uh routine right now and uh what's coming up next for rbi yeah so we're halfway through our second block of training um so we've got basically three and a half weeks now um Pretty darn close to being capped out on all those classes, but we just nice. opened up registration for our baseball and softball for March and April uh, in preparation for evaluations and hopefully a season that starts up on time. Right on. Um, there's a few spots left, but uh, honestly, with the regulations and having to keep group sizes down, um, you, we lose hours, of course, right. but uh, there's more and more kids that want to get involved and uh, the numbers, unfortunately, these kids aren't, they don't have much else going on. Yeah. Um, right. You know, besides having a practice or two a week in hockey, mm -hmm. it's baseball training, wherever it is, just to kind of keep you in shape. Our Absolutely. mutual friend, uh, Rod and Carrie Monroe, has oh, yeah. just logged in, Chris. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, you'll know him and her. Uh, but sorry I'm late, boys. On the two-man bobsled with mom at the Olympic Park in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I Every week he says something, and I highly doubt it. Yeah. But if you are, can you please send me a picture of you and mom in a bobsled? I'd love to see it. <laughs> um, however, he just reminded me of something, and I just kind of mentioned it, but my nephew Jackson and I were out there working, working a little bit uh, the other day. And and I was wondering, uh, for a guy like Jackson, who's my nephew, who's uh, out of shape and oh. has camp coming up, tryouts or whatever for AAA or anything, really, yeah. um, if, if you didn't go to block two, can you still get in block three uh, and be just fine? You're good to go? Yeah. So each block is kind of designated to the time of year. Um, obviously, as we get closer to the season, the players that have been coming throughout the whole offseason, 
they have the advantage of the extra four months of training, mm -hmm. um, which you guys can assume would be the case. Yeah, but sure. that doesn't mean that there isn't a spot for somebody that's just trying to get in shape right before the season starts. Mm -hmm. We cater to every kid. Uh, the nice part is, is even before the restrictions, we had a ratio that was like no more than four players to one coach. Awesome. So that's stayed. Actually, in fact, most of the programs, it's less now just because we, we shrunk the sizes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really easy to kind of have a general plan week to week with all of the kids and then, you know, adapt to each individual kid as they need it, whether it's the throwing programs or the hitting programs or catching or weight training. Yeah. Now, speaking of all your programs, uh, yeah. I think it was maybe three weeks ago. When did we do that cool graphic for Chris with all his notes? Remember that? And you made it up? It was, it was a while ago. I've made a lot of graphics. I know you have. Uh, <laughs> it's been a minute. You mentioned that you have a new infielding program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, yeah. how is that going? Is it still going? And can you give a little detail about that? Yeah. So we are hosting the infield infield outfield fielding program at the Regina Sports Performance Center. Nice. Uh, the old Tartan Curling Club. Yeah, and perfect. it's been awesome. Yeah, we've we've got uh, I think six hours booked a week, and we've got programs running from the 11 to 14, and then the 15 to 18 year olds. And yeah, it's awesome. Uh, our head instructor Ben Fines is running the show out there. Nice. He's done a phenomenal job with the guys. Everybody that comes in is always saying how he worked them, worked them like dogs, and yeah. they're getting a lot better every those day. Days. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the part about fielding is yeah. you just go, go, go. You go for sixty minutes straight. Yeah, yeah. hitting you can take a little break here or there. It's yeah, like yeah. fielding mm -hmm. unless you're waiting in line, which there are no lines. We just go, go, go. So absolutely, yeah, it's been really good. Um, the players are having a blast with it. Uh, for a new program, it's been hugely successful mm -hmm. um yeah it's been it's been awesome That's now chris awesome. you are a basketball player in your past life yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> I, I used to have ups used to have <laughs> uh used to have your name on the wall at miller high school that's true um yeah. Now we just got a notification that Raptors Fred Van oh, Fred Van Vliet breaks franchise record for most points in a game wow what? he scored oh. 52 points oh. or sorry uh, DeRozan had the uh, benchmark before of 52 points. I would have uh, thought it was Vince Carter. But Van Vliet. Yeah, you would assume, hey? yeah. doesn't say how many he got, but I'm assuming more than 52. 52.1. 52.1, <laughs> 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 He shot 10% of a, of a free throw. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did Chris, he James Harden it and take 60 shots? Maybe. Yeah, okay. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> hey, there. I think they got a few injuries piling up over there with the Raptors. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, any last plugs, Chris? Where can people find your mm -hmm. stuff for RBI? And uh, well, thanks again for coming in tonight. Yeah, um, I guess one last plug. So we had our social media guy throw together a, a post right before I oh. jumped on air. Let's um, go share that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when we, when we had to shut down in March, yep. um, and I actually came on and we talked about it, we opened up our, our drill playbook so players could kind of see what's going on yeah. we reshared all of that stuff on our social media so our instagram and uh and facebook nice um even if you're a, an athlete that's in our facility or not in our facility um like we talked about when i came by a few weeks ago um there's no secrets you know all the stuff that we're doing with our program players we want everybody to see it we want everybody to be on the same page if it means you come out once a week and then you work on some of this stuff at home for know four or five six times a week whatever it is or if you can't get out to the facility for whatever reason um yeah go jump on our social medias take a look at all of our posts we're going to continue to update that as well um that way you know there's there's an opportunity to get these kids better while they're at home too yes yeah. especially with the numbers being if we get fully capped out uh that doesn't mean we don't want kids to at least still get a little bit more out of it nice. yeah, and just to build on that too, our other partners over at hoop life mm -hmm. basketball training uh you know they've had their programs and how do you train for basketball without a gym right yeah. so uh they've adapted and i'm like i've seen your drills i know you guys have adapted as well and it's all stuff you can do in your garage it's mm -hmm. all stuff you can do in your basement uh your living room your backyard depending on the weather uh, yeah <laughs> so there's like, no yeah. excuse not to be able to yeah. pick up some gear and get things going absolutely home, right? that's awesome so yeah, that's right. they can find that at you have instagram your facebook page uh yeah, website instagram and facebook um are two two big ones um you can get information for our program registration on our website as well as all of our social media. Awesome. Um, but yeah, super active on our social media pages for our baseball and our softball programs. Perfect. Roddy makes one hell of a cover model. You make sure to tell him that. I, I mean, I know <laughs> don't, don't bump yeah. his tires he's too much. No, no, hey, hey, as, he's as he's going to ask for a raise if you keep. We were talking yeah. about lefties earlier, man. Us lefties got to stick That's together, right. you know, Roddy. Southpaws. We're going to get uh, Alan the intern out at RBI when things open up a little mm -hmm. bit more, and we're going to try to see if Alan can hit a baseball. Don't uh, let the cat out of the bag. It's Ricky. 
the iguana. It's Ricky the iguana <laughs> right here. On, Where Clark. are we? Ricky the iguana. He's going to come out there. We're going to hit some baseballs with Ricky. Chris, thanks for coming in, and uh, we'll do this again before too long. Sounds great. All right. Well, after the break, thanks, we're talking Super Bowl. We got our uh, prop bets coming up that we're going to talk about, and we'll see if we can get in the over under at eight thirty. I doubt it. I don't no, think. I don't happy. think we're looking good. Good luck. Uh, good thing the Leafs and Preds don't play tonight. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a good thing. The Preds we'll see you after the break. Lights.